Hi everyone, so in the following video you're going to see how I went about painting the diamond tiles uh, in the way that I did for the fountain temple rooms. Um, it's one of those techniques that it's simple once you see how it's done, but it really does amp up the effect of the tile work. So I hope you enjoy the tips and techniques that you're about to see. I also want to take a minute and thank Paul for helping me out with naming the channel because I thought it might be a little bit easier for everyone to have something with an actual name to know and share with your friends if you want to. So thank you, Paul, for coming up with the name The Crafting Muse. Uh, so stay tuned, enjoy, and I'd love to see what you end up doing. As always, if you have any questions, please comment and I will do my best to answer them for you. Uh, so here we go. You're going to see how this gets done. And thanks again for watching. All right, so when it comes to finishing off your diamond tile floor, you're going to want to have a nice black wash ready to go. Um, I have one that's a lot more on the thinner side than uh, others may have it because I prefer to get this nicer grayish finish uh, in the end. But if you notice in the lines of the grout, it's actually a lot darker. Um, so you get this great gray on the top of the tiles and this blackening out of the edges and the grout work, if you will. Um, I also use a thinner brush again so I can paint into the tile work and really accentuate the grout. And as for the top, you don't have to be as neat uh, or as even really because if some of the tiles end up just a little bit darker than the others, uh, it gives it a really cool patina in the end of the finish work. So I definitely recommend giving that a go. Um, so you just want to be sure that you take your black wash and you really want to stress getting it more into the lines of the grout first and then just sort of working the excess over the tiles themselves. And by doing that, as you can see, as it dries, again, you get the darker edges with a more gray top to the tile which is what's going to give you that really sharp finish at the end as many of you saw in the post that I put up of the fountain temple flooring. So I'm just going to keep going through here. And then in this case, uh, you do want to make sure that you allow your black wash to dry completely before adding in any further colors. Um, otherwise, it will start to bleed into the colors you want to use for your tiles and it's going to give it a very dark and muddied look. So in this case, I'd recommend if you have some time, do the black wash maybe like a day ahead of time. And then you can work on putting in your paint colors the next day. If it's a matter of you have some time and you want to get this done a little bit faster, uh, go use a hairdryer. But don't put it too close to the foam board or it might cause it to warp due to the heat. Um, I tend to just use a cool setting on the highest level of power, if that makes sense to you. Um, if it doesn't, ask someone who does in your household and they'll understand what I mean by cool setting, high power. But basically, this is the gist of getting your black wash on. Again, keep it thin, work it mostly into the grout lines and then just move it around the top of your tiles. Don't worry if it's not an even coverage because that's what's gonna give you the aged off look. And if it's something where the edge of the tiles are exposed, then you're gonna to wanna to do a black wash around this as well. Don't forget to wrap your lines around the edge as well with a ballpoint pen. Personally, I'm gonna use this as an insert piece, so I'm not worrying about finishing the edges. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back with how to paint the individual tiles with the different colors. Sit tight. Okay, so my black wash is dry now. Um, as you can see, like I was talking about before, you have the lighter gray tile work and you have the darker grout lines, which is going to be key to getting the effect that you want with these tiles. Um, when it comes to painting, you want to make sure you have a brush that has a nice straighter edge to it. Um, I find it helps for cutting into the tiles that you want to paint the different colors and not crossing over into the other tiles themselves that you want to have different colors from each other. Um, so I just make sure to get the brush dampened a little bit and then I just sort of, with my own fingers, basically just flatten out the brush a little bit and it gives you more of a chisel tip that you can put to good use. 
In terms of how I'm doing the colors for these tiles, the colors I'm going to be using today um, from Deco Art, I have Dazzling Metallics. This one is the Festive Green. And the rest being from Craft Smart, we have the Olive Green in a acrylic paint, just the basic matte kind. Same thing for the color Suede. And then finally, I'm doing the Metallic in a Champagne Pearl. Um, this will give me, in the end, a green and gold tile work combination. And it's really up to you as to how you want to do your colors. What I do recommend you make sure you do is make sure one color is much lighter than the other to really offset the pattern if you want to make a huge impact with it. If you're going for more subtle, then I'd use colors from the same families. Um, so you can use the lightest color of, say, a brown, and then go to the darkest color of a brown to play off the colors of each other. Um, so it gives it more of a monochromatic look, um, but you still get the differentiation in the colors that you want to have. Um, so I'm going to start first with getting my paints ready. And I like to start also with the lighter color because it's easier to paint over a lighter color than it is a darker color if for some reason you're going to hiccup and skip over accidentally. Um, it's not that you have to start in any particular way, particular way I should say. Um, just find a good point where you want to get going. I just start from the top and work my way down. Um, in this case I'm going to go for the every other tile approach. So as you can see I just use the edge of that brush to start cutting into the tile. I don't take it to the very absolute edge because I want the aged blackening to come out. I don't want it to get too finished off, if that makes sense. Um, so in this case, I am going to do this row in the ivories, or the suede, I should say, like so, which means that this then is going to be what will become my green. Knowing that these are my greens, I'm going to jump down to the next row and cut back in with that suede. All right, so I finished cutting in with the suede and now what I'm gonna do is jump into using the olive green. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention was that I actually do my distressing after I put my black wash on. Um, I just find it doesn't get the black wash in as deep, which you don't want to have in this particular kind of tile work because you don't want it to get as dark as the grout lines are. Um, so I just use, you know, the typical wire brush and kind of beat it down a couple times. That gives you that nice little stippled impression. I actually use my own fingernails and I'll just drag them across randomly in certain sections to give you more of those lines that look like maybe a piece of furniture was moved over them, that type of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my olive green. And one thing to keep in mind is you have to remember these side little pieces. It's easy to forget because they're not as significant nor as you was focused on them. But go in and start putting in your darker tone. Again, uh, I like playing off of a lighter and a darker. To me, it just gives a really sharp finish at the end that makes a visual impact. Um, but really, it just boils down to your color choice and what kind of colors you want to use for the environment you're creating. Um, so just be aware of it. If you have colors that are too similar to each other, it honestly just won't work as well in terms of being such a visual wow factor. It doesn't mean it won't look good. It may just not be as eye-catching or as noticeable right away than if you were to go around and use a lighter color and a darker color. Um, so I'm going to go through and finish painting out the rest of these tiles, but as you can see, by alternating rows of the diamonds, it starts giving you the every other appearance to the floor. Um, and there are different ways of painting these so you can get patterns in there. Uh, that's something I can always explore later on too in another video. But for now, I'm just going to keep it to the simple every other row, just so you can get an idea as to how this floor gets basically pulled together. All right, so I'm going to finish up painting with this green, and then I will be back as soon as everything is ready and dry. All right, so I have my olive green and the suede on. Uh, both are nice and dry. Again, something you want to make sure that happens. Um, as you can see, as the paint dries, you get more of that really cool texture coming through. Um, remember to keep those 
coats of, coats of paint thinner. You don't want to get it too thin because otherwise you're going to start losing those neat distressing aspects. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my metallics and cut in with the metallic. Um, in this case, you want to make sure you're doing almost a dry brushing technique. You don't want it to fill in all these lovely little nooks and grooves and crannies that we have going on in the tile work. Um, same concept as you would for your matte paint. You want to keep it to your light color first, and then move over to the darker one. So I'm going to work on using the champagne, the metallic champagne. And then um, I use paper plates when I know I have to do dry brushing, just because I find it's a little bit faster just to pull off that excess paint right on to the paper plate itself. Um, and then just lightly brush over the other color. Um, you don't want it to be a thick coat again. You just want it really to give it that shine and sheen. So it looks more like a tile floor. Um, and know, it kind of just amps up the look of it a little bit. Looks more like you're walking into a grand hallway or you know a grand library, something like that. Um, but keep those coats of paint thin and that'll be sure to preserve all the great detail you have going on underneath with your matte colors. This is really more to just highlight what's going on and give it some more visual interest. So again, a little bit too much there. Just keep pulling it through. Um, you'll find some metallics will actually go on thicker than others. Um, it could just be a reason of pigmentations used in the process or whatever. Um, so it does help just to kind of take your first tiles and get a feel for how the paint is going to cover. If it's not covering quite as you would like it, uh, you may find you need to do two thin layers as opposed to just one. Um, I'm thinking I might end up doing it on this particular one with the champagne because the champagne doesn't have as much coverage as other colors that I've used. Um, but regardless, you're still getting the details sort of highlighted because of the metallic sheen that's starting to happen. So I'm going to go through, and again, I'm just going to cut in and do all of the suede-based tiles first. When those are done, I'll go back in and I'll show you the metallic green getting put on top of the olive. So I'm going to finish this up with the suede, and I'll be right back. Alright, as I suspected, I did need to do uh, two layers of that champagne color. So if you're going to be working with the same colors, just a heads up, you might want to do a double back and do an extra thin coat of the champagne on top of the suede. Uh, what I'm going to do now is shift over and work on the metallic green. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to be leaving what's in the top of my cap because I've been using this color a lot lately and I'm running out. Um, so you take your festive green and go back to where the olive is and just start cutting into those tiles. Again, keeping it a thin layer. Now, this particular pane is coating the way I had been hoping the other one as well, wood as well. So this is already bringing out the details of the distressed bits and I don't see this needing any more than the one coat. So I'm just going to go through and as before, cut into each of the tiles. Keep the layering of the paint thin. You don't want to overwhelm it and make it a super thick coat because then you're going to start losing out on all these really gorgeous details of the distressed age look that the metallics have helped to uh, highlight. Um, so again, just keep going through bringing it down to your next row. And as you see this kind of coming to a completion, you're going to be very pleased with the end results. Um, the other thing is that if you find you're not as nuts about the sheen or the glow of a metallic, jump it down to a pearlized paint color. Or you can also add in a little bit of your original matte color to the metallic you want to use, and that will dull the metallic down a little bit. Um, in this case, for what I have planned for this little swath, um, I'm kind of going more for the ornate look. I don't want it to be as dulled down, so I'm perfectly fine with having a brighter metallic showing off 
on the tiles. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind style-wise. Again, if you want it more muted, either shift down to a pearlized color or add in some of your original matte just to make it so it's not so sparkly. Um, <laughs> but in this case, I want it to sparkle. So once again, what I'm gonna do is go through and finish getting all of these tiles. And you start seeing it take shape and really get the look of that interesting finished tile. As you can see, I forgot to dry brush a little bit here. So I'm just gonna pick that back up. But again, that actually works a little bit to my advantage because tiles aren't all worn the same way so there may be a few that have a better preservation of their original color while others may look more worn and dull but for me the coolest part is that you get to see your textures coming out more once you get that metallic layer on uh, when it comes time to letting everything dry and this is complete, I definitely recommend making sure that you do a wash with a uh, half and half of Mod Podge and just water. Um, it will protect what you have going on here. It'll keep the paints from getting nicked and flaked off accidentally, um, but it won't make it so it gets sort of an unusual coloration to it or dull it too much because you've cut the Mod Podge down a little bit. But as I get to these last tiles, you can see this is finally taking shape. And I'm pretty darn excited for its end results. Here we go with the last tile. And that's it. So this is how I created the painting style on the fountain and temple floors. So as you can see with the layer of the black wash, with the mats, with the metallics, you really do get these neat effects of seeing the distressed bits on the tile, the deep grooves of the grout. Um, so it just makes for a really strong and impactful piece once you get it put to use. So hopefully this has given you some ideas as to what to do with your own pattern tiles. And as always, I'd love to see what you end up doing with your own projects. Thanks very much for watching.